I'm Jan, this is Product Balls, and here is what a second Trump presidency I know words, I have the best words would mean for the EU and more specifically for the countries in the heart of Europe. Let's dive in. First, let's agree on one simple thing. US support for Ukraine in its fight against Russia's brutal and illegal invasion has been absolutely vital for Ukraine's survival. Without the weapon system, training and intelligence sharing that the US has provided, Ukraine would have a much harder time defending itself. And of course, that help costs money. A lot of money. To date, according to publicly available data, the US has actually provided Ukraine with military and financial help worth over 98 billion euros. Trump falsely claims it's more than 250 billion. The EU, on the other hand, has provided Ukraine with uh, more than 160 billion euros. Again, Trump falsely claims that the EU has only provided 71 billion euros. We're already into Ukraine for over 200 billion dollars. We've given hundreds of billions of dollars. And why are we at over 200 billion dollars? And the European nations are, if you add them up, it's a very similar sized economy. They're at 25 billion dollars. So we're at 200 plus. The exact figures don't matter that much though. What matters is that Trump has been using this imbalance which he entirely made up in the first place, as an excuse to stop supporting Ukraine altogether. Basically, he is saying that because the Europeans have given so much less to Ukraine than the US, which is simply false, it is fair that the US now leaves it up to Europe to deal with Russia itself. Now, let's stop here for a second. If you like our content, you know what to do. Do drop a comment down below and consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. It definitely helps the channel grow and also motivates me to keep going. And also a huge thank you to everyone supporting me on herohero.co slash parkpals. You mean the world to me. And now let's keep going. Actually, Trump's plan for ending the war in Ukraine is said to be emerging right now. Yes, knowing Trump, it may be unlikely to succeed, but hear me out anyway. Apparently, he would push Ukraine to formally give up on Crimea and parts of the Donbass, which Russia has, by the way, been occupying since 2014. Understandable, right? After all, appeasement which means giving territories to the aggressor, has had a great track record. Trump would also formally promise not to admit Ukraine into NATO and stop all military aid to Ukraine if it refuses to sue for peace with Russia. And just in case other NATO allies tried to help Ukraine survive anyway, even after the US stops all military aid, Trump has actually said he would cut all intelligence sharing with those allies as well. I mean, US intelligence has been traditionally very reliable regarding Russia. At the start of the full-scale invasion in February 2022, a lot of allies didn't even believe Russia was about to invade Ukraine. It just seemed so out of touch with reality. And it was mainly US intelligence that changed their minds and convinced the allies that the invasion was uh, uh, actually about to take place. Now, the US apparently has a lot of ways to obtain high quality information from inside Russia and from inside the top echelons of power in the Kremlin, which uh, probably dates back all the way to the Cold War. And as you can imagine, if Trump really does decide to stop all relevant intelligence sharing, the other allies could be trying all their want, uh, but their help to Ukraine would be uh, much less efficient. Simply put, not having this valuable source of information, that is uh, US intelligence sharing, would be a game changer. And unfortunately, a very negative one for Ukraine and for NATO. Uh, if we want to take it to the extreme, it is not just about Ukraine at this point. If, hypothetically, the Russian dictator decides to invade a different European country, maybe even a NATO ally or an EU member state, uh, Europe's ability to survive that invasion will be greatly reduced as well. That brings me to another crucial point. With Trump appeasing Putin the dictator and curtailing a cooperation with his own allies in NATO, the alliance itself would be pretty much dead. I mean, Trump himself thinks so. In 2020, he told precisely that to European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. To make it even worse, he said that the U US would never come to Europe's help if attacked and that the US would even leave NATO entirely. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, 
will you protect us? I said, no, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. And it seems that he wasn't bluffing because in 2018, he even instructed his defense secretary to start preparing the formal withdrawal process from NATO. In the end, of course, Trump pulled back on the on the plan, uh, probably fearing what that move would do to his image, which uh, he holds very dear. But people close to him warn that if he wins a second term, Trump may well bring back similar attempts to leave NATO again. And needless to say, without the US, uh, Europe would have a very hard time defending against an attack or helping Ukraine. It's not so much about the strength of our enemies, I mean, besides, Russia proves time and again that it is only the second best army in Ukraine, and now in Russia too, for that matter, um, as Ukrainian soldiers in Kursk confirm. The problem is about the lack of defense coordination in, in Europe. Plus, without the US, Europe would also lose its nuclear shield. The UK only contributes a small portion of its 300 nuclear warheads to NATO, and France, the only remaining European nuclear power, contributes absolutely nothing to NATO. Simply put, NATO just needs the world's strongest military, the US, on its side. Here's the catch, though. If Trump really does try to leave NATO in his second term as well, it will be more difficult for him. Congress has actually recently passed a law barring any future president, so that means not just Trump, from leaving NATO without the agreement of the lawmakers. But there's a problem for the Allies and for Ukraine. Trump doesn't even have to formally leave NATO. The US can just remain a member on paper, but ignore all of its commitments toward NATO at the same time. I mean, what good is a NATO member anyway who openly claims that it would not help the others if attacked? Trump definitely wants to lessen the US involvement in NATO and perhaps by refusing to attend summits or having the US military sit out joint exercises. Think tanks such as the pro-Trump Center for Renewing America have called for a dormant NATO, whereby the US would take a more detached approach to the, to the alliance. This vision would see the US playing a significantly downsized security role and thus shifting from being the primary provider of military capacity in Europe to provider only and maybe only in times of crisis, maybe not even that. Another option, as suggested by Trump's advisors themselves, would mean that essentially only those allies who meet the agreed spending target of 2% of GDP on their defense would be protected by the US. Which means that those paying less would be left to die. And that all means that if Trump wins a second term, uh, the US definitely does need to take its own defense much more seriously, including pooling resources and buying weapons, both for Ukraine and for its own protection. For our own sake, we just have to suppose that the US would simply not save us if crap hit the fan even more so than it already has. It is also very possible that Trump would just flush the US alliance obligation toward Europe just simply down the toilet. Third, as you would expect from Trump and consistent with his zero-sum worldview, he considers the EU an economic threat to the US. He even called the EU a foe on par with Russia and China. And as such, he wants to impose a 10% tariff on all imports coming from Europe to the US. And that could have catastrophic consequences for the European industry given that the US is now the number one export market for the EU. Take this, in 2023, European companies exported goods and services worth more than 500 billion euros to the US. Europe is also reliant on the US for its energy supplies, with nearly 50% of its LNG coming from the country. And with Trump, all that would be at a significant risk. And not surprisingly, the European Commission is already preparing a response. It wants to try the, the good old carrot and stick approach. First, it will approach uh, Trump even before he takes office if he wins the election in November and try to discuss with him which US products the EU could be buying more in bigger quantities. Essentially, it wants to buy more to avoid the US tariffs that Trump now threatened. Now, however, if that talks fail, the European Commission's Trade Department is reportedly already preparing tariffs of its own, 
even higher than 50% in some cases. But hey, Trump is famously great at the art of the deal, right? So the negotiations should be smooth, of course. But in the very, very unlikely event that they fail, this all could very much start a trade war between the US and the EU. Clearly, the EU's fate during a potential second Trump presidency will depend on a number of factors. Apart from the art of the deal, it depends on how hawkish Trump's team is and how seriously he means the threats to leave NATO and um, start a trade war with uh, the EU. Because if he is being serious, and it doesn't matter whether he would leave NATO fully or just technically, the whole security architecture of the world will be redrawn. Whatever happens, Europe's fate would hang in the balance, and a lot would depend on its unity and its ability to deal with those spoiling that unity. The most obvious risk to uh, EU's unity is Viktor Orban of Hungary, who has already played a self-styled peacemaker, tried appeasement with Putin himself, much like Trump, and even visited Trump in Florida. He has long been pressing um, for peace in Ukraine through similar methods like Trump as well. And by that I mean he has betrayed his de jure allies in the EU and NATO multiple times by blocking vital decisions including further aid to Ukraine. And as we've discussed on the channel before, Robert Fico of Slovakia is yet another troublemaker that the EU will have to contain if it wants to have any chance of survival uh, in a potential Trump's presidency number two. To end on a more positive note, if the EU manages to stay united in the face of Trump 2.0, it could even be good news for the bloc's future. I mean, it could lead to Europe's greater strategic autonomy and new powers, such as joint buying of arms, joint commanding structures, or even joint nuclear capacity. So in a way, Trump could even make Europe stronger. But it will definitely be a very painful growth process. Let's just hope that Ukraine doesn't become a victim of such growth. And what do you think? Do leave a comment down below, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again to all supporters on herohero.co slash This has been Jan and have a great one.